Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, hello. Um, I'm going to talk to you a bit about accessibility. Uh, and uh, yeah, the most important thing I would say is uh, that we should yeah uh, not think about accessibility as an afterthought or as a thing that we do for people with disabilities. I mean, we do it also for these people, but it's good for your app or for your application and for your website in general. So it it makes it more stable and it makes it more searchable and makes it more usable actually. So uh, there's this cool gang on the on the internet called the W3C and they wrote these web content accessibility guidelines. Uh, and yeah, so if you ever see someone flash this, uh, you know they know about web accessibility, so you're in, in good company. And uh, yeah, these accessibility guidelines, if you have read through them sometime, they're pretty long and they can be pretty complicated. So if you're already tuning out, there's some pretty good tools, um, including Wave, Axe, and Lighthouse that you can install as browser extensions. And it's very easy to remember because that's exactly what you need for a really bad B-list horror movie. So that you can install. So the four rules of the web content, or the four main things of the web content accessibility guidelines is something that we're gonna go through real quick so you know how to use these tools and how to interpret these issues. So this uh, is about perceivability of your app, about operability, about understandability, and about robustness. So let's just start with the first one, perceivability. It's basically about yeah, being able to see or that the screen reader can see or uh, interpret what actually goes on in your app. And uh, two things that are important to talk about there is um, the easiest thing that you can do is with your Nextcloud app, just use our core CSS variables that we have. So that the contrast, like the, for example, we have uh, variables for, for color, for text color, and for primary color. And when you use that, automatically the contrast will be proper to WCAG AA. AA is like a level for uh, conformity. And then uh, another thing is having meaningful alt text. So oftentimes uh, the, these extensions will tell you there's no alternative text. And then it means you have this alt tag missing. Oftentimes, uh, the only thing that's needed is actually an empty alt tag. So for example, if you have decorated images or something, but whenever there's an icon, like an action, like an edit icon, where there's no text next to it, you need to have an alt tag with explanatory text, like edit or edit comment or something like that. Okay, next thing is operability. That basically pertains to keyboard and mouse or any other input <laughs> methods that you have. There's two big things, easy things that you can check with. The easiest thing is unplug your mouse, deactivate your touchpad, and just test with the keyboard. Use the tab key to switch uh, along the, the different uh, input elements, and use enter to navigate, like to, to activate them as a click, basically. And that already, yeah, uh, makes it clear, makes clear a lot of problems that you might have. And uh, then the other thing is, of course, also don't forget the mouse. Um, yeah, we have this rule of 44 by 44 pixels, minimum clickable area that comes from uh, the yeah, mobile guidelines, but it's not only for mobile, it's also for desktop, because yeah, people are not all exact, and uh, yeah, some more space for clicking is pretty cool. And the third thing is understandability. And yeah, basically one of the big things is make your app translatable. Uh, there's some people, I won't mention them by name, uh, <laughs> that can help you with that. Um, point to that. But uh, yeah, I'm just pointing in the general direction. Uh, uh, who can help you with translatability? Um, and uh, yeah, make your app translatable because it's always easier to, to, for people to use this in their native language. And then also don't use jargon. Like, don't use the disk, the floppy disk icon for meaning save, for example. Like, no one of the generation after us, or even our generation, knows what a, what a floppy disk even is. Or URL, for example. A URL, no one knows what the hell that is. Just call it a link, for example. And I know you're already saying, oh, that's a different thing. Yeah, no one, no one understands that. <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth thing is uh, robustness. So. Uh, yeah, use the standards again. Like, look through our design documentation. There's this, yeah, documented elements. Yeah, John's very happy about that. <laughs> so, uh, for example, app navigation, other elements, popovers, it also makes your life much, much easier. And whenever there's updates, uh, it's much more robust. And then we have the good old H2 and poly elements uh, that you can use. It's just web standards, basically. And yeah, that's basically how you break barriers. But I hear you. Ah, can we automate all this? It's so difficult. And to that I say, no problem, mate. There is an NPM module for Axe uh, that you can set up with your CI process. And uh, yeah, Julius, uh, I think, was looking into that. So 
whoever wants to help him with that, please talk to him. Uh, and yeah, there's a blog post also by the X people, and X is also open source, for example. And then, if you want to know more, there's a really great website called accessibilityproject.com. It's a11yproject.com. That's how you abbreviate accessibility. Not a very accessible acronym. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I needed to change the font of the two ones to make it even visible that it's ones. So yeah, anyway, go there. Uh, really good tips, really easy to digest. And yeah, we already had a, uh, the workshop, so a lot of people can teach you how to use X. Thank you.